is, is this good? Can, can you hear me? All right, before we begin, I wanted to thank you on behalf of Teach All Children to Read Bureau. Uh, I know it's not easy having an interview like this, so thank you for taking it, and let's get started. Yeah, you're welcome. I just wanted to get the truth about how awful reading really is out there. I know I'm not the only one who thinks this way either. So why are you opposed to a child learning to read? Isn't reading one of the best tools a child can have? No, it's not. And I am sick and tired of all these people helping children to become smarter by teaching them strategies on how to read better. I mean, come on. When are you ever going to use reading in the real world? You aren't serious about your last point, are you? Of course I am. I don't need no reading to bake a cake. I don't need no reading when using the internet. And I especially don't need no reading when writing my next novel. I see. Well, it is clear you do have some hesitancy about reading. So we had three experts give their opinion on video about the subject. Why don't we take a look at the first one? First of all, what is explicit instruction? This style of teaching literacy utilizes direct instruction to teach important skills such as letter sound relationships, spelling, vocabulary, and grammar. It models and explains concepts clearly so that the material is engaging for students. The impact of explicit reading instruction. Explicit reading instruction is beneficial as it provides children with opportunities to actively practice skills and gain feedback from their teacher on what they can improve. Each time these skills are practiced, educators can then collect data to better gauge how to best differentiate for their students in their next lesson. For many ELL students, explicit instruction offers clear and consistent language that assists in them being able to follow each step more easily. In grades kindergarten through third, a student's attention span is very minimal. Therefore, explicit instruction is imperative as it helps to section the learning into smaller parts. Moving on, we have the effects of dyslexia on, the, on reading success. First of all, what is dyslexia? Dyslexia can be defined as a specific learning disability that is neurological in origin. It is characterized by difficulties with accurate and or fluid, fluent word recognition and poor spelling as well as decoding abilities. The effects of dyslexia on reading development. Dyslexia affects each individual differently depending on the severity of the condition, how soon the student was diagnosed, and the effectiveness of the instruction or remediation that they are receiving. Students with dyslexia often struggle with reading comprehension. Therefore, the, their reading experience of these students is reduced, which negatively affects the growth of their vocabulary and background knowledge. Any thoughts? Yes, yeah, so what? I bet you paid her to say that. And you know what else? What? I'd be willing to believe you if there was any science behind all this. But no, just a bunch of squiggly lines. Actually, there is a science of reading. Say what? Let's play the next clip. We're going to discuss the Scarborough's reading rope. Um, this is a method in the science of reading. Um, so as you can see in the diagram, it is a rope with two different parts that weave together and combine to make one big structure. So this is very similar to a DNA strand. Um, all the different parts of DNA, your different codes, and everything coming together to create your genetics and the buildup of an individual. Same thing goes for the reading rope. You have an upper strand and a lower strand, and each strand has different parts that it's broken down into. So in the upper strand, you're going to have background knowledge, vocabulary, language structures, verbal reasoning, and literacy knowledge. And then in your lower strand, you're going to have phonological awareness, decoding, and sight recognition. So when all of these skills together are mastered, um, you clump them with the lower and the upper, and when the lower is mastered and the upper is mastered, you combine these parts of the rope. And this is when you get your reading skills and the base for knowledge. 
I still don't believe it. Oh, there's more. So today I'm going to be talking about the components of reading based on science of reading research. We have five components, which are phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and text comprehension. So the first one is phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness is, the under is when students understand that spoken words are made up of separate units of sound. Uh, these sounds are blended together when the words are spoken. So for example, when we hear the word cat, we know that it has three sounds being k, a, t, three sounds. The phonemic, phonemic awareness is important because it helps children when they are learning how to read and how they need to pronounce each sound individually. And it increases children's success in reading in the future. So without phonemic awareness, children will not be able to comprehend phonics. What are phonics? Phonics, um, they are a set of rules that we use to make sure that we use the same letters together to make the same sounds and words. Uh, phonics help us sound out our words, allow us to recognize the sounds when we see a word. So when we see a word on a, on a document or piece of paper, or you know, when we're reading, we can recognize that this set of, of letters makes this certain sound. Uh, and it also helps children recognize relationships within the alphabet or within their words. So an example would be the, the set of letters E, A, which could be beach, T, ear. We hear that same E sound in all of these words with the letters E, A together. Fluency is when children are able to take less time reading words and begin to form sentences and comprehend what they are reading. Uh, this it is important because it begins the process of comprehension of content and allows them to begin advancing their skills and raising their reading level. So it allows them to really start uh, not sounding out words, but just uh, trying to form their sentences, realizing what they're saying. Uh, without fluency, children would not be able to comprehend vocabulary. And vocabulary are the things that we need to know on how to communicate with other people. So it has four uh, components to vocabulary, which is listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Vocabulary is important because it's it connecting to what they hear, to what they have seen on paper, and it helps them again with comprehension. But, and without vocabulary, children will not be able to comprehend text comprehension. Uh, text comprehension is, a ch is when a child is able to form meaning behind what they are reading or hearing from prior knowledge. So what they know from before on putting their sounds together and forming these words is what helps them form the sentences and understand what they are actually reading to form, you know, complete thoughts. And text comprehension is important because it's used throughout the entire student's life. Um, it allows them to understand content better and make more connections. And the students gain confidence in applying the correct comprehension skills to their reading. Science smile. Next thing you're going to tell is how there's different strategies you can employ to help with reading. Like how you can increase phonemic awareness by playing word games and using tongue twisters. Or maybe you'll say a child can better understand phonics by having a word bank of high frequency words like how now brown cow. And I guess you think that way, then you'll naturally assume fluency can be increased by using guided practice and teaching decoded multisyllabic words. Or you might think vocabulary will be better by say having large word picture signs. And then you'll finish all this off with how comprehension is achieved by pulling from students' background knowledge by asking questions. <laughs> Wow, that was amazing. How did you know all that about reading? Know what? <laughs> you know what? Never mind. We actually have just one more thing we want to drink from.
are you and what are you doing in my house? 